Hey guys, uh, hello and welcome. I finally have a little bit of time to film a video, so here I am, and here I am with some beautiful coleus. Uh, this is one of my absolute all-time favorite plants. I think it's a super underrated plant in the garden. And I just wanted to give you guys some tips and a little bit of history. So this here is, there's a huge taxonomical um, confusion about this plant about what its name is and where it comes from. A lot of people tend to agree that it originated in Malaysia. And the name is really quite, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Contradicted in scientific journals and stuff. So a lot of people say that this here is in the genus Plectranthus, but a lot of people are trying to move it into another genus, um, Solina Steman. But the thing is, a lot of the people that say that it's in the genus Selena Steeman want it to be in its own genus Coleus, uh, or the painted nettles. So it's, it's a lot of people can't really agree on the botanical name of this plant, but for the sake of this video, we're going to call it the Coleus. So I have three varieties here. I have, this one's called Wizard Sunset, really, really beautiful. This one here is called Wizard Scarlet. And then this one over here is called, I have it written down in my other phone, just a second, I completely forgot. But they're all really, really wonderful varieties. Um, I highly recommend them all. They all have a very similar growth habit. They're all in the Lamiaceae family. And just one second, sorry. And they're all decently woody, but they, and they propagate really well, by the way, but they are technically uh, perennial plants, if you can manage to get them a lot. So this one here is actually called Electric Lime, and it's a little bit of a bigger variety, too. <clears throat> so the vast majority of coleus will naturally grow as a shrub, and they'll grow to about four feet tall and about four feet wide. I highly recommend pinching them off right at the very top, just to regenerate them and grow cuttings. These guys grow really, really wonderfully as cuttings. You can take a couple of nodes right off of ev the end of every single branch and then grow cuttings that way. Uh, I recommend rooting them in water because when you root them in water, um, what's the word I'm looking for? If you root them in water, you can really see the roots form and then it's just really nice. They're very hairy, very white roots and they root incredibly quickly, sometimes within two, sometimes even three days. I highly recommend rooting these guys in warm water. Sorry if I sound a little monotone today. I, I got There's like lots of allergies going around right now. <clears throat> and for that reason, my voice kind of went today, but oh well. Uh, yeah, so another thing I want to say is these guys are very suitable for if you want to grow a standard or a topiary. If you want to grow them that way, I recommend choosing one plant with a very strong central leader and a lot of apical dominance, and just continually, I recommend staking them with bamboo so that they don't bend and flex too much. Excuse me. And then just continually keep on pruning off the side shoots until you have one long stem, pretty barren of leaves, and then you just let it sort of bush out on the top. Um... Some very, very suitable varieties for that include the Sunset one. This one does wonderfully as a topiary. And then some of the larger leafed green ones too. So you, you can have really, really small ones too, uh, with leaves that very rarely exceed a couple of centimeters in length. And then you have ones with even larger ones. There's one called Red Princess, I believe, that has even larger leaves than this one here. Another thing I want to say is that uh, coleus are incredibly easy. I give them maybe a 2 out of 10 on the difficulty scale. Just because coleus, it, it's a plant with a good personality. It's very forgiving. It doesn't matter, or it doesn't really require too much watering. It doesn't seem to be bothered if it goes bone dry between waterings. Just as long as you keep to a schedule, because they do like consistency. So I water this planter here. This is a about a five gallon planter. I water it every Friday and sometimes if it's really hot in the weekend I'll water it on Tuesdays too. Perfectly fine to water these guys with tap water. They do benefit from a liquid feed fertilizer but one thing that I will say is if you use a liquid feed fertilizer that has a little bit too much potassium or phosphorus so the second two out of the three numbers uh, this guy will bloom 
which could be a good thing, has a really attractive, cool-toned uh, spike of blooms that's about this tall, sometimes a little taller, and you can actually germinate the seeds. They take about 7 to 14 days to germinate. Uh, when you're germinating the seeds, don't put them deeper than about a centimeter in the soil, and use a really kind of sandy uh, soil profile. That tends to work really well for them. Germination rates are about 70-80%, so not the best, but not the worst either. Uh, you want to keep those evenly moist. Uh, and this plant just generally prefers a more sandy soil. Just in general, from what I've personally seen, they tend to do really well in those. But yeah, so it has a really nice purple to white, sometimes blue spike. And I don't know if you guys can see here, this one's just starting. And the blooms persist on the plant for a while, about a week. They attract hummingbirds, they attract butterflies, and especially bees, lots of bees. And some hoverflies too. So, uh, just some, t some more tips. If you get, s some varieties actually will have some brown spots and brown tips. But if you get them where it's kind of hard to see, because my camera doesn't want to focus. I don't know if you guys can see, there's like three little brown tips there. Most of the time that's either aphid damage or it's been too exposed to the sun. So this plant here loves growing in relatively bright indirect light. I know I say that about lots of plants, but this plant here is one that can tolerate a bit of a punch. It can tolerate shade, but as long as you don't have it cooking in direct sun all day. So like, for example, right here, that direct sun would be a little bit too much for this plant, I think. You can plant them directly down into the ground. They're cold hardy to about 5 degrees Celsius. Uh, this is a plant where in the w when the winter starts, if you get one freeze, you'll notice you could have a, an 8 foot tall bush, and then overnight it'll be on the ground and it'll just be like a pile of mush. So try to get these guys away from ice. Uh, you can overwinter them indoors as cuttings. Water propagation, definitely the most reliable method. If you're going to propagate them in soil, got to keep them really, really moist because they need a lot of water to produce roots. I actually don't recommend rooting hormone. I don't think they need it to produce roots, but if you want to, go for it. <laughs> and yeah, I recommend putting many different varieties in containers. I actually took a lot of cuttings out of this electric lime one. I don't know if you can see there. Just make clean, sharp cuts. I used a pair of scissors for that. And I don't know if you guys can see, it produced two new shoots, and it just gives you a more bushy, full appearance, which is really nice. Yeah, so these guys also can have problems with spider mites. It's a little bit less common, I think. I think aphids are definitely more of a threat. And you want to make sure that they don't sit too long in water, because then they will rot a little bit. Which is, sounds a little contradictory, because as cuttings, they need a lot of water to produce roots. So you want to make sure you have really good drainage, like very good drainage. And yeah, some really good companion plants to these include Nipida, Catnip, Mint, anything that's in the Plectranthus genus, because it's very closely related. Uh, they look really good with Salvias and Geraniums and uh, just a whole assortment of things, Begonias, uh, Lilies, anything really. It's just such a non-fussy plant. Uh, this plant here will leaf out and bloom for you all throughout the summer if you let it. It usually cools down around September. Some of the varieties are repeat bloomers and will also bloom in October. And some of the blooms are fragrant. Many of them are not. Many of them have a lemony scent to them, but a lot of them don't really have fragrance at all, but they're still quite striking and beautiful. I wouldn't recommend eating coleus, although a choice few varieties is about 450 varieties. Um, are edible, but I wouldn't recommend it if you don't know which variety because a lot of them have tannins and all sorts of different toxins, so just to be on the safe side, don't recommend eating it. <laughs> uh, if you notice your plant getting a little bit yellow, that's almost always because of underwatering. If you notice it getting little green bumps that don't seem to be part of the pattern that you're expecting on that plant, typically that's because it has a problem with boron or sulfur or one of the micronutrients, uh, you can just feed it with a with a, an all-purpose fertilizer. And they transplant very well, and you, if you overwinter them indoors, you can get a really nice branching plant. I think overwintering these guys is very much so like overwintering a poinsettia. You want to give it the brightest 
place in your home, you want to keep it evenly moist and just pamper it so that it's even more beautiful in the fall or in the next spring. And prune it down a little bit just to encourage new side shoots. So those are kind of my tips on coleus. Very stunning plant. Isn't that beautiful? Can't even get it all in the frame. And yeah, stay blessed. I think starting from now, like after this video, or after the next few videos, I think I'm going to make the ends of my videos more of like a Q&A. If you guys have any questions, because I've noticed I have a lot of repeat questions. So, and I want to help everyone I can. So yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments and stay blessed and be healthy.